Good evening, friends. God bless you. Let us continue our study in uh, 1 Peter chapter 2 and first three verses. And particularly, I am going to focus only, um, we are going to focus on one item today. But let me read uh, New Living Translation first. So get rid of all evil behavior. Be done with all decide hypocrisy, jealousy, and all unkind speech like newborn babies. You must crave pure spiritual milk so that you will grow into full experience of salvation. Cry out for this nourishment now that you have had a taste of the Lord's kindness. And we wanted to ultimately figure out what Peter is trying to say or what Peter meant by that you will grow into full experience of salvation. We also learned in past few days that Peter is comparing a new believer who has accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior with the newborn babies. And this is not a newborn baby. The Greek word is used is basically the baby has just come out from mother's womb. That he is referring to newborn baby. Also, we learned that we cannot, just like a newborn baby needs a help from mother, in the same way, new Christians, new believer needs a help. They need an external help. And the Holy Spirit comes to help us. And the Holy Spirit helps us to cast away all the, the sin list that uh, listed in the first uh, verse. Um, uh, first Peter chapter 2, first verse, and then Holy Spirit will help us to get rid of or throw away or cast away our old sinful nature. Today we are going to focus on uh, what he says that crave, you must crave pure spiritual milk. So what is crave pure spiritual milk means or what is that we have to keep that hunger for? And we will go back again to learn about each Greek word. The first one is called crave. The Greek word for crave is epipotheo. Some of the translation, English translation, has translated epipotheo as a desire. But it is more than desire. It is like a craving. Have you seen any person who is habituated for smoking or tobacco, after a while, their body will be craving to smoke. That is a craving. So Peter is saying that we must crave. We must crave. Now, the how that craving will come into us, how that craving craving will be will develop in us. That's a, that is also interesting thing. Well, well and and. Let me give you this example this way. Suppose if your wife is really good in cooking and your wife makes a very delicious, healthy food or cook uh, food for you or dishes that you like most. Now, if you are going from your workplace to your home and on the way you saw, saw a fast food restaurant and you stop by, and you order a big fries and big cup of soda and then you order some very big burgers and on your way home you are eating those fries drinking soda and eating burgers by the time you are coming home what happened to your craving of good food you wanted to eat but you can't because you have filled yourself with the junk food that same goes with our spiritual life what we are feeding on, how we are feeding on, that has direct relationship with our craving for a good, nourishing, spiritual food. So the crave. The second word here is pure. Crave for pure spiritual milk. What is a pure? The simple, uh, so the word, Greek word for pure is called Adolon. Adolon literally means not a deceitful. Or in another ones, in another way, pure means undiluted or uncontaminated. So do you believe that the word of God is contaminated? 
Never. Do you believe that word of God can be contaminated? Never. So why Peter is saying that pure? Why he is using this undiluted, uh, the, the word called uh, uh, adolon, undiluted, uncontaminated, or a not deceitful? Well, the word of God is true. Word of God is always true. But the way the devil present us the word of God, he twists it. He twists a little bit. When he comes to Eve and say in the garden and says that when you eat the fruit, you will be like God. Well, they were already created in the image of God. It was not that once they eat the fruit of God, they will be like God. They were already created. Adam and Eve were created in the image of God. The second thing he says that, uh, did not God say not to eat every fruit? Well, that was not God said. If you read Genesis, God says that eat every fruit. Eat the fruits. God never said don't eat. But devil says, God, did God say not to eat every fruit? in the garden. Devil knows scripture more than you and me because that is why he, when he tempted Jesus, he used the scriptures. It is written, it is written, it is written. And that is why it is very important for me and you to understand the word of God. We need to have this real food so we can be standing firm when the devil comes. We knew what that word means. We knew what the scripture talks about us. We knew what the, God, uh, the heart of father is. So that is why pure means devil uses God's words and twists them and he contaminates them. And the third word we are trying to see, spiritual milk. Now, this the milk the word for milk used here, a Greek word is called logikon. Logikon. And logikon basically means rational or reasonable. But if you look at the root word for logikon is logos. Now you know what logos means. Logos means the word. John 1.14 says that that word became flesh. Word became flesh. That word is logos. Which and and from that logos comes logicon. It is translated here as the milk. So we so Paul says that you should be craving. Sorry, Peter is saying you should be craving for the pure, uncontaminated, undiluted, not a deceitful word of God. And when you crave, it will help you to grow into full experience of salvation. So, if you, if you, this is this is well known, how you know the infant or newborn baby is healthy? The one way to say is the healthy infant, healthy baby is a hungry infant. If the baby does not eat well, then what happens? The parents will get concerned and they will ask the doctor, why my baby, my baby is not getting hungry? Why the baby is not eating? Paul has a very, very sober warning or a concern. If a person claims to have been born again and never desires a milk, they need to carefully and honestly examine themselves. If you read 2 Corinthians 13, 5, Paul is referring, he says that if you are born again Christian, and if you are not, uh, if you are not hungry for milk, you need to check yourself. So, how is our, our spiritual appetite? How is our Spiritual, how is your and my appetite? Are we hungry for the pure milk of the word? If, if our, our hunger, 
is dull or diluted or we don't have a hungry that means we might have some dirty clothing some something is not right with us, within us and peter says that take them away when the holy spirit brings up to you take them away if holy spirit says that go and forgive somebody forgive if holy spirit says to go and be kind to somebody do that if holy spirit says that do these good works then do it God's servant Howard Hendricks says really good that you are either in the world and the world is confirming you to the image of Jesus Christ or you are in the world and the world is squeezing you into its mold. Let me read again. Howard Hendricks says that you are either in the world and the world is confirming you to the image of Jesus Christ or you are in the world and the world is squeezing you into the mold. There is a very well-known Scottish preacher's wise saying is that sin will keep you from the Bible or the Bible will keep you from sin. So when people stop reading and studying word, it is because they are eating the junk food or junk food of the world or they have something in their life that needs to be addressed. I give you the example that if you are on your way home, if you feed yourself with the junk food, you will lose your appetite. So Peter is encouraging that feed yourself with the pure spiritual milk. Develop that craving. Don't feed yourself. Don't surround yourself with a situation that can feel you lies, that feed you decide, that is not healthy, that is negative all around. Stay away from them. And Peter says that that's how you will develop the hunger. Associate with the people who knows the Lord. Associate with the people who are hungry for the word of God. We'll continue our study tomorrow and we'll focus on tomorrow what is to grow into full experience of salvation. And I encourage you to read First Peter chapter 1 and chapter 2 again. May God bless you and thank you.